thank you. So my name is Andre Aime, I work for GeoSolutions, come from Italy, and I work on GeoServer. This talk is about creating maps with GeoServer using a variety of uh, styling languages, and I will use this opportunity to compare the various styling languages and show how you do the most common things in the various languages, and uh, well, uh, that should uh, give you an idea of which styling languages is uh, your favorite. And uh, ev people ask me what, what is the best, and uh, different people have different answers. So I know what I like best, but uh, different people will have a, a, a different answer. So in GeoServer, there are um, uh, historically, SLD is the, the main uh, styling language. Um, it's, uh, well, we, kn we all know it. Um, and then we started adding uh, extensions like uh, CSS, YSLD, and MB styles, and I'm going to present them one by one. Uh, they all translate down into uh, an object model in memory, Java objects, which is based on SLD. And from there, we can literally create an SLD file for you. So basically, every language it, it gets translated down to SLD. Um, this also means that all the styling languages uh, share uh, some concepts. So each, each styling language uh, contains the notion of a layer that the styles applies to. Rules, the rules have filters or selectors. What should be painted? Well, what should I paint red? What should I paint yellow? Uh, scale dependencies, uh, when should I paint stuff? Should I paint it on one to one million or what, one to 10,000? And then they contain symbolizers, so given a certain geometry, how do I paint it as a point, as a line, as a polygon? I'm just adding a label and stuff like that. So these are the basic concepts. They apply to all styling languages. Everything else is a syntax and mechanics. Style layer description was 0 and 1, 1 is the only is the only OGC standard styling language. There is no other uh, language that is standardized. Everything else is vendor specific. So the GeoCSS is specific to GeoServer, MB styles comes from Mapbox and so on. Uh, SLD uh, has been edited in GeoServer for years, uh, not to its fault, honestly. It was meant for machine interchange. One software exports the, its own style in XML and another software imports it in, uh, from the XML in, in its own internal style representation. It wasn't meant to be hand edited. But <laughs> uh, as we all know, many people do, including myself, uh, since many people hand edit it, uh, in a recent version of uh, GeoServer, we added autocomplete in the style editor so that you can control space and get a list of valid tags for that position. And it can be generated by external tools, and I have a section about that at the end. This is a, an example of SLD with just one rule, a filter that says a type has to be equals to alpine hat, a scale dependency with a max scale denominator tag that says this rule uh, is painted from 1 to 1 to 1 to 100,000, and uh, not a 1 to 1 million, for example. And then we uh, symbolize this uh, point with this alpine hot little PNG image. It's painful to look at, honestly. Then we have YSLD. The, the idea here is that uh, we have this language, YAML, that can map more or less every XML concept. So they, what they did was basically to do an equivalent of XML in YAML. And the result is more compact. Uh, the ver verbosity level is in between SLD and CSS. and has a notion of zoom levels if needed, but otherwise you can use the scale denominators. The same style uh, you saw before is presented here in YSLD. It's more compact, it's more readable. I don't like it at all, personally. I hate YAML, but preference. Right? This is GeoCSS. This is the one that I, I like personally. It's compact syntax, familiar for web developer. Uh, we have a very compact filtering syntax, which is CQL. Uh, we have autocomplete in the style editor, and this is the whole thing in CSS. Three lines. Type equals all pine up. The scale denominator has to be less than 100,000, and you have to use that PNG. I don't think it gets any more compact or expressive than, th than this. However, it has a dark side. Uh, cascading style, style sheets are based on the notion of cascading, rules that override other rules based on specificity. Many people do not understand or are willing to play with that kind of complexity. Um, so we added a way to turn it off. 
Then there is MB Styles. MB Styles has um, been uh, uh, developed by Mapbox for client-side rendering of, Map of Mapbox uh, vector tiles. It's JSON-based. Uh, uh, it has this notion that the zoom levels do not, uh, sorry, scale denominators do not exist. You only play with the zoom levels of Web Mercator. So if you play with that projection, all fine. If you don't, well, tough luck. Uh, unlike the other uh, styling languages, uh, it cannot support uh, styling extensions because, well, it was meant to take the, the, the style that you develop in the client side and use it in the server side as well. And this is how it looks more or less. Um, I omitted a bit of boilerplate, but you can see it's JSON base. Uh, one oddity is that uh, all the images that you need to use come from a sprite file, which is one giant image, which contains all the little sub-images, and there is a JSON file telling you where to go to extract the little sub-images. The sprites are a concept that come from the video games world of uh, when, I'm, when I was little. Then we have a scale dependency. As you can see, there is a min zoom and not a scale denominator. The filter is in post fit notation. In 2000 and, and almost 20, I really do, would not like to see post, post fit notation, but uh, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and then we have the, the reference to the image. It just says Alpine Hut because in the sprite definition, there is a, a, a little JSON saying, telling you, ah, yeah, the Alpine Hut, it's at uh, this coordinates in the sprite. So what's next? Uh, next? We are going to explore the styling concept, and I have examples for SLD, YSLD, and CSS. I don't have examples for MB style, so uh, sorry. So scale dependencies. Scale dependencies are the uh, bread and butter of any uh, web map, because any web map is multi-scale. People can zoom in and zoom out as they please. So uh, we need to turn off and on uh, layers and parts of the layers, uh, depending on the zoom level, to keep the map uh, faster to render and readable. And we want to maybe uh, render things differently depending on the zoom level, like increasing the thickness of the roads uh, and stuff like, that, stuff like that. So how do I express scale dependencies in the various languages? In SLD, we have a min and max scale denominator uh, tags. In YSLD, I have a range between 1,000 and uh, ten, uh, 1 million, or I can do the scale using scientific notation, or I can use the, the uh, zoom levels of a particular well-known grid set. In CSS, the syntax is a scale denominator, and then we, we, you can use modifiers to make uh, the big numbers easier to read, like 1K, 1M, to uh, identify uh, 1,000 and 1 million. I created it because I, I kept on getting annoying, uh, like I was looking at five and some zeros, and I could never tell it if it was 5,000, 50,000, 500,000, or 5 millions. But this way, I can tell it right away what, what the magnitude is. Uh, we have a notion of unit of measure. Uh, OK, so in, in terms of MB styles, you would have only the zoom levels of Web Mercator, as I said. Uh, GeoServer supports the notion of a unit of measure for your uh, elements. So if I say stroke width 5, by default, it means pixels, uh, which could be useful or not. Uh, there's always a, a possibility in GeoServer to specify that you want uh, the 5 to mean meters on the ground or feet on the ground. And uh, that's how you do it in SLD. You have to use that huge URI, HTTP, OpenGeoSpatial.org, SE, units, meter. OK, thank you. In uh, YSLD, it gets uh, a bit better. UM column meter, nice. In CSS, it's even simpler, 5M. OK, I just wanted 5 meter. Why get, make it so complicated? There is a number of transformation functions that can be used to uh, express uh, scale varying um, uh, widths or rotations or stuff like that, any numeric value. Uh, this is a, a bit more complicated as a, as a CSS. I'm basically saying categorized on the scale denominator, categorized SSD, and then below 400,000 is going to be two pixels, below 800k it's going to be one nine, and so on and so on. It's a little table. Um, why did I have to go those lengths? Well, because if you render OpenStreetMap, the, the, the widths of the, the roads vary be, be between the scales, but it's not a linear dependency. So you have to prepare this little table instead. It doesn't, it doesn't go linear. If you try to go linear, the roads start inter interfering with the buildings. 
the same, the very same style in SLD looks like this. Uh, well, you have the big numbers because there is no compact notation for numbers, and uh, well, the the categorize is more or less the same. So that covers uh, scale denominators. How do I do about? How do I go about point styling? Uh, for the simple image, uh, we can pick back that uh, that. Uh, 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 style that I used before. So you just refer, in CSS you just refer to the URL of the image. In SLD, well, you do exactly the same. It just, just takes 10 times more lines. Um, you are not limited to PNGs. You can also use SVGs, for example. And SVGs can be used in a couple of ways. You can take an, an SVG and use it as is with its own colors and shades and whatnot, like as if it was a picture. Or you can take it as a shape, like in this case, in which I'm saying, OK, let's use the bank.svg, which is just a symbol, and it would be, would be black if uh, I didn't say anything. And then I apply a custom fill on, on it. Uh, OpenStreetMap rendering uses uh, the, the original Open, OpenStreetMap style, uses a lot of these little SVGs that are just shapes. And then we have to color them based on our requirements. Uh, for comparison, I put the YSLD version of the same style below. As you can see, it's quite a bit longer, but still pretty readable. Sometimes, depending on the zoom level, you have to compose the symbols or override them. So this is another case of, uh, from OpenStreetMap. At one zoom level, the fountains are sort of a double circle, uh, light blue circle and the inner uh, darker blue circle. Uh, but at the next zoom level, we switch to a more complicated SVG symbol. So based on the scale denominator, we do the replacement of, from one symbology to the other. Marks have a lot of options in GeoServer. There is a lot of sources of symbology. There are the built-in symbol names from the SLD specification, which are like a bunch, like six or something, circle, square, triangle, uh, times, and so on. And then you, we can use uh, true type font using this uh, syntax TTF column slash slash the font name like windings and then a char code we which we can pick from the um, character selector of the operating system and these fonts actually contain little symbols instead of letters. We, can, we have the wind barbs generator in which we say how strong the wind is and it's gonna generate the right wind barb for the for the case. We can use WKT, which is a way to, a well-known text, which is a way to specify lines and polygons and points. Uh, and then we can build our own little symbols by uh, specifying how the uh, pointer should move. And I don't know if anyone has ever programmed in that uh, programming language that has a little turtle going around and you, and you have to. It's, it's for the elementary schools, whatever. You, you can see more symbologies at, at this link. In terms of polygon filling, uh, well, polygon thing can be uh, pretty boring. Uh, you just specify a color, and uh, these are the two cases. One highlight in CSS, I have named colors, the, the ones that are in the web CSS. It's like 200 named colors or something like that. And well, in, uh, in SLD, instead, you have to go and use the hex syntax for the same color. So for some cases, uh, colors in CSS can be more readable. Sometimes you want to, to repeat little images inside the field, and in this case, to paint cemeteries of different religions, I can say something like, well, okay, let's make the, the background greenish for the, for the cemetery, and then, depending on the zoom level, when I'm below uh, one to 50,000, I'm gonna say, okay, if the religion is Jewish, then uh, let's use that PNG. If it's, it's Christian, another PNG, and if it's generic, we have a, another, generic, another generic symbol. So this is composing a, a, a solid background with repeated symbols. Uh, the same, the very same style that I see here in CSS can be expressed in YSLD using this and this. So I need to choose lights to make it fit. So again, verbosity, but still pretty human, human readable. Uh, sometimes we want to fit with hatches, so repeated lines, uh, diagonal lines, uh, crossing lines, and so on. So there are little symbols that are meant to be stacked side by side. So an X, I can put it side by side and it generates a cross hatch. 
and uh, I have a number of these symbols that can be used to do hatches diagonal in the two directions, vertical, horizontal, and crossed. Okay, let's go to painting lines. How do I paint, paint lines? So this is an example for, uh, from uh, uh, an OSM style that I've been developing. Uh, it's the same uh, line color, it's borders of states, and I paint them at different uh, zoom levels depending on their um, importance. So at, one cert at a certain zoom level I paint only the country borders, then uh, if I zoom in I start painting the pr uh, provincial borders and so on, then the municipalities' borders and so on. They are all the same color, but they are getting activated based on their importance at different zoom levels. Uh, if I want to get fancy, I can do dashing on the lines, okay? Uh, and I can do repeated uh, symbols as well, and I can uh, organize them so that they don't step on each other, like in this alternation of lines and points. Labeling is, is a universe of its own. There is a million uh, vendor options to control things. I'm not gonna get in details of explaining each one because it would take a presentation. Um, but basically, uh, you have uh, ability to pick from an attribute, maybe apply some functions to make it uppercase, lowercase, uh, connect uh, multiple attributes into one label, and then position the label above, below, centered, um, along the line, and so on. Uh, this is another case, uh, again in CSS, doing uh, road, uh, road network labeling instead. And I have a few uh, vendor options such as label follow line that makes the line follow the curve of the lines. In terms of polygon labels, they are pretty much the same as points. Uh, the only notable thing is this goodness of fit parameter, which uh, controls whether the, line, the label is displayed based on the Rel relative size of the label versus the polygon. Like, I don't want to paint a label if it's 10 times bigger than, than its own polygon. It would just hide it. So by default, your server paints the, the label if at least 50% of it is inside the polygon. But you can control it. In terms of raster styling, well, we map uh, values to colors, like in a digital elevation model. I'm showing something new uh, at the bottom, which is hill shading. Uh, GeoServer 216 can, can do this kind of hill shading automatically. You just turn it on and uh, enable the right level of vertical exager exaggeration. The result is kind of nice. Uh, we can do contrast enhancement if your uh, image is a bit dull. Uh, and uh, we have an, an extension to, uh, for you to choose the algorithm and the maximum and the minimum. It pretty much matches what you have in QGIS, if you're familiar with it. And then we have uh, a bunch of other features like color compositing. Uh, you take two layers and you compose them, but instead of painting one on top of the other, you m blend the colors of the two in some ways. Like, for example, I can use a thick line border and an alpha composition to generate a, a colored, um, color border from the field that I had below. So it's basically a cookie, a cookie cutter uh, uh, only the parts that fall in the black, only the parts of the first map that fall in the black gets, in, gets into the second. There is a Z ordering. Um, this is a true crossing somewhere in Germany, I think, uh, which is a nightmare. Uh, it probably has 20 Z levels or something like that. And you can tell GeoServer, okay, sort by an attribute the, the roads, Z order, and put them together in, in the map so that we can respect the natural order of things. We can transform stuff, so we can take a geometry and shift it a bit to create a drop shadow effect, or we can extract the, the points in it, and uh, the func these functions are pluggable so you can make your own. There are rendering transformation that we mentioned a number of times, the notion that you can call a WPS process to extract uh, information, so you can extract contours, you can extract uh, uh, in this case, um, I'm calling uh, a GFL script, and I'm uh, extracting the NDVI uh, value, the vegetation index, uh, from a 12-band image. And, uh, uh, well, so far I, I've shown you only uh, SLD, CSS, and YSLD uh, under the notion that you would be typing them, let's say, or at least understand them, but what if you wanted to do uh, exporting from a desktop tool, well, 
Uh, you can use QGIS. Uh, it used to be rather bad, but uh, it, it, improved, it improved a lot in during the last few years. We got label exporting, which wasn't there. We got uh, raster symbolizer export so that we, you can do contrast enhancement, color maps and the like from uh, QGIS. Basically, you make your map in QGIS, so then you go and say, save as SLD the, the style instead of save, save as QML, and then you use it in GeoServer. Then there is GeoStyler which still is going to cover in its own presentation, no, so I'm not going to bog you with details. It's going to give you all the ones you want. Uh, GeoSolution is working on its own styler, which uh, we will call MapStore Styler, I think. We uh, developed it uh, during OGC testbeds for uh, Mapbox vector tiles. And, uh, well, it's, uh, you, you can see the interface. It's uh, uh, similar to a desktop uh, approach. Uh, here is another example with our color picker. There is also a desktop tool uh, which is part of OSGEO called the SLD Editor, uh, which allows you to point and click your way to create an SLD. And that's it. Any question? Any question? So just a quick question on the last um, option you um, explained with exporting an SLD from QGIS. So from my experience with this, it's not a seamless process. One of the biggest challenges it is, it is namespaces and uh, that uh, oh, wait, don't match wait, the... Oh, wait, 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 <laughs> so, wait. So the question is if it's uh, addressed in the new, newer version and through this editor. What did you use? Did you use the boundless QGIS plugin or did you just use a save as SLD? Save as. Um, no, the namespaces are fine. The GeoServer supports both SLD 1.0 and SLD 1.1. Uh, the problem is that uh, older version of QGIS, such as QGIS 2, sometimes exported XML, which was not even valid XML. So unbalanced tags and uh, or tags which were pla in places that were not supposed to be. That has been fixed. However, uh, QGIS exports SLD 1.1. And in, within the limits of our tests, the GeoServer understands it. There are a number of uh, symbology elements that are not, um, that don't come through. Much of, of the, the advanced symbology doesn't come through, but basic styles do. The idea is that you top normally learn SLD anyways, and then you untune the result as necessary. Kevin. Thanks. Um, can you apply MD, MB styles to uh, normal vector layers or only to vector tiles? No, the idea, uh, the idea is that uh, uh, MB styles was, was created so that you can do uh, Mapbox vector tile rendering on the client side, but if you need to fall back on pure OGC protocols, because vector tiles is not part of that picture, uh, then you can, and you can generate PNGs on the server side. So the idea is that you use the same style on the client side and the server side, and your server will render the PNGs if you need them. Because I've tried to use um, MB styles with GeoServer vector tiles, and I, I couldn't get it to work. Uh, I never tried myself. Mm. <laughs> okay. Maybe this is a longer topic. Huh? We, we use the vector tiles, but we use them in open layers, and the styles were SLDs client side. We did it in, a, in the OGC vector, uh, vector tiles pilot. And there is an engineering report you can read about the, the activity. Any more questions? Okay. Andrea, thank you very much.